What is good, my beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here or finding me on the Explore page for the very first time, which there's a good chance that you may be because of the style of this video, my name is Sydney Baker Green. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. But today is going to be a very old school style YouTube video. I really miss that style of YouTube. So I'm gonna do my best to bring it back. We're just gonna sit down, talk, go through this topic and really connect with each other. And I'm excited about it. So in today's video, I wanna talk about what I would do do if I was building a YouTube channel from scratch in 2024 and I realize that I have been on YouTube for 16 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a nice flight. My video making skills have gotten better. I'll Hi guys, my name is Sydney Baker Green and this is my first vlog type YouTube video. No matter what you're going through now, realize it's only temporary and that it will get better. Hey, what's good, everybody? My name is Sid, and you're about to watch my Through My Eyes YouTube video for Daytona Beach. This new YouTube guideline is basically giving, to at least me, the way I feel is it's giving the middle finger to all those who are genuine, hardworking content creators. So I've made the decision that from here on out, I'm going to be focusing on photography, cinematography, and I'm going to upload some vlogs here and there. As a professional cinematographer, I have plenty of professional cinema equipment that I can rig up to my professional gimbals, such as my Ronin S. If you give up at any point in your journey, then you're simply going to fail. You don't fail until you decide not to get back up. Back in early 2022, Nikon sent me the Z9 to test out the new Nikon RAW firmware update. Keep in mind, that YouTube is only 18 years old. Now, I know you're probably looking at my subscriber count. Not all of my time on YouTube has been on this channel. I actually started out when I was about 10 or 11 years old and I created uh, flight simulator content, video game content at the time. And I was in the trenches. I was holding up my camcorder in the very beginning that was actually on a little tape that I could digitize and bring onto the computer at the time. That was, that was crazy, but recording the screen because I didn't know about screen recording software at the time. Slowly I found out about that, grew that channel. And then around high school time, I wanted to start creating lifestyle content. I grew up in the Joey Graceffa, Connor Franta, uh, Tyler Oakley, Shane Dawson. Oh God. <laughs> like I grew up in that era of YouTube. Uh, Kingsley was a good one. Sawyer Hartman, he's a photographer actually in my niche now. I don't know if he's really posting anymore, but that was the style of YouTube I, I grew up on. And so I wanted to create that content. Then I survived the YouTube adpocalypse. Well, actually I didn't survive at the time, but YouTube made it harder to be a partner. So I had partner status. They would pay me for ads. I remember I got my first little $100 check in high school, which was amazing. And then I got kicked off the platform and they're like, nope, not anymore. You don't have the, the requirements. And so that was very discouraging. So I gave up for a while. Uh, I was very sporadic with posting content and whatnot. And then I decided that was for a year. I kind of given up. And then I decided I was going to come back and really take this seriously. Then I went through YouTube during the pandemic. So I just have a lot really is what I'm trying to say. I have a lot that I want to give to you guys really at the age of 20, 27 now. Um, that's also helped a lot is growing up on this platform and then the maturity that comes with age, obviously. So this video is going to be broken up into chapters with each individual thought because I think that's going to be the best way to digest this. But I want you to keep in mind before we get into those chapters that these thoughts are based off of a founding principle that I have noticed over the past 16 years and that I've experienced the past few years as I've done this full time and made a living off of it. And that is going to be simple. I believe that if you are consistent, you show up for your audience on whatever schedule you set, whether it's weekly or bi, bi-weekly, not bi-weekly, but twice a week, right? You're authentic. So you are true to who you are, regardless of who you are. And you'd strive to make each video better in comparison to only yourself, you will succeed on this platform. Now that's easier said than done. You've probably heard that before, but the problem with that is we don't talk about how to have longevity on this platform, how to not burn out. So that's what my principles are going to be. Now I do wanna start with the first one because the biggest thing to longevity is going to be authenticity. Be authentic. And I really struggled with that. I mean, I think I even struggled with that a lot 
when I started taking this seriously. And I was in my 20s when I started taking this seriously. I was very okay with the adult I was becoming, but I still had that big comparison bug in me. And it tore me apart trying to create content. It made it less fun. And so of course I would burn out every so often or I'd find myself dreading getting in front of the camera because I wasn't really being who I was. I wasn't doing the easiest thing that I know how to do. I was trying to manipulate myself, thinking, well, if I just say the right thing in the right way, then I'll build a massive audience. And I can't live like that no more. I'm 20, I'm 27. I can, I need naps to get through the day. So be who you are. That is the best way to go for it. The second thing that I would do if I was starting a channel in 2024 kind of goes into the first one, but it's going to be to compare myself a lot less to other individuals. I do think taking a healthy look at the industry that you're in or the niche you're in, right, is, is very good if you want to be competitive, to see what other people are talking about or just to get an idea. But do not compare your success to another channel. And I'm gonna tell you something. I went to my first trade show this year within my niche and I saw a lot of creators that I looked up to. And I had been comparing myself to them for quite a while, feeling like maybe there's just no room for me on this niche. I don't know why I'm not nearly as successful as they are. When I tell you that a lot of these people are in their 40s, <laughs> they are in their 40s. I have, in retrospect, right, at least 15 years to even get to an accurate comparison. They have different resources, a different mentality, a, a different life experience than me. It almost feels like Disney Channel when you find out that you had Jason Earls in his 30s playing a teenager. That is what it felt like. And no shade to them, but it gave me the hindsight where it's like, man, I cannot compare myself to these individuals because one, they're older than me, and two, comparison is gonna kill my joy. But that was one of the biggest things that I have realized is that, I mean, I'm talking to you young creators, I wanna be specific with this too. Don't compare yourself to people that you're seeing on this platform. Build your own path, focus on that own path. Remember, you're writing your own story, your own autobiography, not that of somebody else. So you don't need to be at point A, even if you're looking back and they were young, right? If you see people who are young, you don't have to be at that point, right? Everybody has a different path. So just keep that in mind. Don't compare yourself to other creators. Now, the third thing we're gonna talk about is some practicality here, right? If I was starting a YouTube channel in 2024, I would want to make sure that I maintained my own personality outside of creating content. Let me explain that. I'm talking about boundaries here. When I got into the idea of working for myself, it was always that I don't want to spend all of my life slaving for myself, or not myself, but I don't want to spend all of my life slaving for somebody else and have no time for myself. However, running a business is just as time consuming as working a nine to five. As a matter of fact, I would say it's way more time consuming than working a nine to five. And the hard part when you're working for yourself is setting those boundaries, stopping work not working till midnight just because you can and no one's telling you to go home. It is so easy to fall into that and then it becomes a cycle where all you're doing is working and ignoring the life that you're trying to build, not realizing that you can still have it now, that you don't have to reach some milestone to take a vacation, to take a break, to give yourself some space, to have hobbies. I'm now 27 years old and I am learning how to live life again because I spent so much time you know, through YouTube over the past few years, ignoring those hobbies, just working. And I did take my vacations. Don't get me wrong. I'm very bougie. I was taking my vacations, but they were always tied to some sort of milestone. And that just made it so unsatisfying. And that made the longevity hard because then I would come back from the vacation. And because I've been ignoring my needs, my needs for rest for so long, I would not be able to get back into the swing of YouTube for three weeks after that because my body's just like, I'm tired. I need what I was having on vacation, right? And so that really slowed down my progress. 
And I would like you guys to not repeat that mistake. So make sure that you focus on having your hobbies. Make sure that you set a set schedule for yourself. When five o'clock hits, you stop working. If you wanna stop at three, then you stop. You play your video games, you go out with friends, you do those things that you've always wanted to do, not attached to a milestone. So another piece of practical advice. If I was starting a channel in 2024, I would make sure that I continue to create the content I love despite having a video go viral. I also need to explain this one. You'll hear creators say a lot of the times that the first video that they had that went viral, they did not expect it to go viral. And that was the same case with me. I just was talking about something and then the next thing I know, I that video went double platinum. And when you live in paycheck to paycheck and when you trying to be able to eat, <laughs> you are like, oh snap, let me try to replicate that. Unfortunately, I fell into a pitfall of I only focused on that content and because that's not what this channel was really meant to be, I again lost my love for creating. And so I'm letting you know that you should really continue to create the content that you love at the end of the day. I'm looking at my analytics now and the majority of people who watch my videos all the time and throughout even that video going viral, right, are not subscribed to my channel. That means that generally the people who are watching my videos are from the Explore page. Now that's not saying you don't cater to your audience. No, of course you do. You wanna cater to your audience. But I want a life where my audience loves me for me and those people who are meant to stick around and to be in that autobiography, right, when I am 55 years old or whenever I decide to write my book, they will be here regardless of what I choose to create because my goal is to have people like me, not what I'm necessarily talking about, if that makes sense. So you will experience a video going viral, but be sure to create that content that you love and don't uh, sell out just to try to make uh, money, so to speak. With that thought process in mind on money, the next thing that I would do is I would not let somebody shame me for making money on a YouTube channel, right? Because at the end of the day, Everybody gotta eat. You like the price of gas, which has gone down a little bit, is still expensive. The cost of living is up. Rent is insane. If anybody is judging you for making money, whatever way you're deciding to make money, they need to have a plethora of seats. Cause at this point it is nobody's business. People are out here selling feet pics on the internet. And although that's not me, I, I'm, not, I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna judge somebody who does do it. So what we need to make sure is that we we stand firm in what we believe in, <laughs> so to speak. That also ties into my sixth point. People will try to put you into a boat that you may not be in, right? For example, I make a lot of my money as well, being a photographer and filmmaker in real life, not on the internet, I should say. And I have individuals who will see what I do on YouTube, and then try to paint me into the box of being like an influencer and something like that. And although I have had brand deals on the channel, the majority of what I do is actually artistic, right? But I've seen a lot of creators, even within my niche recently, saying things like, hey, you know, I'm a filmmaker, I'm not a YouTuber. And there's just been negative connotations placed off of having a platform, I guess. I don't know what it is with people. Perhaps maybe it's a tiny bit of jealousy, but I hate to see people who are good at what they do stop doing it because they feel like they're being painted by a broad stroke of the brush. At 27 years old, call me what you want, okay? Call me what you want. I don't care anymore because I love what I'm doing and I want you guys to feel the same way. So I don't know exactly what the title of that point was, but I think you get the point. Now, the seventh thing I would do if I was starting a YouTube channel in 2024 is I would not be so caught up in the analytics. I do like using them as a tool and I think that's how they should be used as a tool but each video is going to do different for different reasons. The algorithm is going to do what the algorithm wants to do. And sometimes you do have a really good video with really good production value. People all the time, you'll get comments like I do. I don't understand how you don't have more subscribers. Your content is so good. You know what? Hey, it's true. And that's why the analytics will tear you apart, okay? So use them as a tool. And again, compare only to yourself when you are using those analytics, because if you don't, you are going to suck all the joy out of this. You can approach this as a business. That is 100% okay. And you should approach this as a business, especially if you're doing it full time. 
but analytics are just as much of a tool as projections are at the beginning of a year before you actually get your final numbers. And you make the best adjustments that you can possible to do as good once you have those tools as you would in a big business, but you don't let that make or break you the same way big businesses don't. People don't hit their goals all the time and, and that's okay because factors outside of our control always happen. Another thing that I want you to remember, and this is probably the most important one if I was starting a channel in 2024, is that this is going to be lonely, okay? Being a creator is very niche. Creating a business is very niche, right? You are going to inevitably lose probably friends or friends are gonna stop understanding you. You're gonna start, you know, pitching your services if you're a photographer and people ain't gonna book you and stuff like that. It's, it's lonely, right? And you're gonna feel like you don't matter, but people care about you. They do. People are watching. If they don't even tell you, they are watching and you are helping somebody. You are helping somebody grow on their journey in life or in their niche or whatever. And I felt so alone for quite a while. I ain't gonna cry, but I felt so alone for quite a while. And when I went to that trade show that I was talking about where I discovered a lot of people were older, I also had a lot of people come up to me and tell me that they watched my videos. They liked my content. People who I didn't, like people who I was even watching, they knew about me. And that really helped me a lot last year because even at that trade show, I felt so out of place. I called my mentor crying <laughs> because I felt so out of place. Like I did not belong. That's just not the case. So just keep that in mind when you feel like you're about to give up, keep in mind that you are making a difference, please because we need everybody that we have on this platform. That's what makes it beautiful. The last thing that I would do if I was creating a YouTube channel in 2024, I probably could go on forever, but I think this is a good one to end on. I would not be afraid to grow with my channel. I would not be afraid to let my content grow with the individual I'm becoming. And I would talk a lot more about the things that are on my mind and I would relate more with people on my channel. And I say this because I think there's a big fear, or at least I experienced a big fear of what's called the switch up, right? Where it's like, I wanna talk about something else, but I feel so boxed in by what I'm doing and it's somewhat working that I'm afraid to do something new. And I don't think I've ever heard of a success story of a one trick pony, if you get what I'm saying, right? And I found that some of my videos that do the best are the ones where I really just spend time connecting. I spend time being myself and letting individuals know how I've grown and to let my growth be shown, if that makes sense. Sometimes just sitting down leveling with the camera has made an amazing video. And I gotta hammer this home too, like I'm within a niche, right? So it's a very technical channel. It is growing and I'm gonna grow with my channel this year. I'm gonna expand a little bit, but being in something like photography and filmmaking where people are coming to you for one thing, it can be hard, it can be scary to, to, to start putting yourself out there, to letting individuals know who you are and not just giving them information. But I feel like that has been so self-sacrificing. Uh, like I'm literally feel like part of me is dying by using this outlet that as a kid for me was used to express myself. And now I'm no longer doing that. I'm just, here's some information, okay, goodbye. Like that, that actually sucks. So don't do that. That was, that was, that was really cathartic. <laughs> I think I needed that a lot. And I hope to have more videos on the channel. I don't hope, I'm going to have more videos on the channel where I sit down and I talk to you guys just like this, old school YouTube vibes, because I feel like that's gonna be a good filler for some of the other content that I have, because I'm gonna start taking more time to produce some of my main content. But I wanna share parts of you with me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. If you have not, follow me on social media. The links are in the description down below. Check out my merch line, okay? I'm a Swifty, I like Taylor Swift, I made some cool stuff. Check that out too. And guys, remember, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on life, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Keep climbing, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. I'm Sydney, and I'll see you beautiful people next time. Peace out.